So this is the bean that they're getting right now. The towns around here, they come together to continue the tradition using ancient techniques. We're Alex and Lindsay. We're two travelers who are exploring South America. Suddenly, a strict lockdown began in Peru, and we've been stuck ever since. Along the way, we took in a stray dog, and he hasn't left our side. It's been months, and we're still here, so we're documenting the whole experience and sharing it with you. Good morning, guys. Today we're going on an adventure, and you know what that calls for. Coca tea. Good morning, guys. We're going on an adventure. We are going to Palcoya Mountain, which is basically another rainbow mountain. It's just not as well known. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, buddy. You know <laughs> what to do. Get on the car. Come on. Today has to begin with a very hot coffee from local farmers. We support local farmers. This coffee is for you. Welcome. Thank you. Gracias. Now we have potato in the back. <laughs> All right, we have some coffee to start the morning, right? And we have a packed car back here with potato. <laughs> He's not gonna make room for you, is he? I'm doing that. Even more. Mm -hmm. really cool. Look at all the yellow bags. <laughs> We're going through Oropesa town and this town is famous for selling bread. We're going to see how one of these ladies approaches and offers bread. We're going to buy some. This is a famous piece of bread here in Cusco. It is called chuta bread. Would you like to try some? Let's try some. There you go. Ooh, it's warm and soft. Stuff. Yeah. Mmm. It has a sweetness to There's it. A little it's, sweet, yeah. it's kind of like a Hawaiian sweet roll mm -hmm. back home, which is some of the best bread you can get. Wow. That's amazing. So all the ladies, they wave their bright yellow bags to try to get you to come buy their bread. It's this little town and wow. they all are just standing on the side of the road, waving, waving. We'll show you. <laughs> so it only takes you a couple minutes to get through this small town and the whole way these ladies are flagging you down. You should show up. Watch right this. There. from Cusco ask their relatives to take this where they are really? so this is a nice gift for a Cusqueño so when you visit a Cusqueño take him or her some <laughs> bread from Oropesa he will love it oh. I just bought coca leaves. This is very important for people in Cusco. They chew it because they feel more energetic and they don't uh, uh, waste their time. That's what they say. All right, guys, we just made a little stop in the small town of Keiway. There's four different lagoons and we are at the first one. So this is just slightly out of the way. So check out this lagoon. It's gorgeous. So we're two hours from El Coyo now. And this is one of the four lagoons in a four lagoon circuit on the way there. So we saw these people on the side of the road doing some work with their donkeys and we're gonna interview them and see what they're actually doing. And in exchange for their information, we're gonna give them some bread. What's the name of this bread again? Chuta bread. Hi, hi, hi. papá. Hola. Mi nombre es Miguel, es mis amigos Lindsay y Alex Hola. quieren hacerle unas Hola. preguntas de qué están haciendo. We're wondering what they're having the donkeys do right now. Yeah. Amigo, ¿qué están haciendo los, los, los burritos ahorita? After this, they're going to select what is left. So they're separating aba beans from the rest of the material. This 
is the Abba bean. That's what they're getting right now. They use it for food. Three donkeys just going in a circle here, trampling this stuff. All right, we're gonna give them the bread. So we're giving them this bread as a gift. Just stopped off the side of the road so we could talk to them and find out why they're doing this, how they're doing it. Gracias! Look guys, we just stopped off the side of the road again because there are a bunch of alpaca roaming. Look at this, there are herds of alpaca everywhere. What is the name of the bridge again? Keswachaka. Keswachaka. Hey, Anju, Papa, la entrada para que es Huachaca. Justamente. Esta. Sí, sí. sí. Gracias, Papa Lino. <laughs> So we just stopped to talk to this shepherd here with, with her baby lamb and her flock. ¿Cómo te llamas, mami? ¿Qué más así? Dorotea. Dorotea? ¿Qué se siente? ¿Qué se siente? ¿Qué? ¿Qué se siente? Miki. ¿Es más para poder escuchar? ¿No te llamas qué? ¿Quieres que anote? No te llamas para poder escuchar. Español, mamá. Well, guys, I don't speak Quechua, so we may not have as much as information. Ahí está, vamos a la nota. <laughs> uh -huh. She doesn't know Spanish, but she knows Quechua. So. Aliyanchu ima sutiki. Aliyanchu kamu sutiki. Oh, there's a baby. Wow. Oh, I love it. Okay. Okay, so she only speaks Quechua, the native language of Peru. She doesn't speak Spanish, and none of us speak Quechua, so we can't really uh, speak to her too much. Hello. Oh, hi. Pong and chupame. In pitami. In pitami. And now she runs away. It follows her. That's amazing. And she's gone. That was my favorite part of the day. I love little lambs. <laughs> and it was so cool to meet a true local who only speaks Quechua. She didn't seem afraid of us. She was super nice. Let us take pictures, hold her lamb. And then there's her flock of sheep. Guys, look at this, we're almost there. This is the famous Inca Bridge, the last remaining Inca Bridge. And it's only still remaining because the towns around here, they come together to continue the tradition using ancient techniques to keep the bridge going. It's a rope bridge. And look at these views. Wow. It's made out of the grass that you see around and it's hand woven. Pretty incredible. This bridge takes four days to be renewed. So typically every year the people will rebuild this bridge. It's been here for probably about 500 years. It's the last standing Inca rope bridge. And it's only standing here still because the people come together from all the communities around here and they put this, this rope together and they build it so that it's strong. Because of the pandemic this year, they weren't able to do it, so it's unsafe to cross. So we can get close to it, but we're not gonna cross it. Little bright 
out here today, guys, but uh, Look. we picked some of this grass just to give you an idea. It's super thin. I don't know how this can be strong enough to make a bridge, but somehow it is when it's all wound together. I don't know how they do it. So this stuff grows everywhere up here, and it only grows at a high altitude like this. And so they take all of this and they make all of this rope. And look, some of it is super thick. But anyway, take a look at this bridge. So much history here. This bridge, one of the coolest things we've seen in Peru yet. Can't believe the Inca first put it here. We are now standing on Puente Queswachaca. This is amazing. The only one of its kind left. So the Inca had other rope bridges, but this is the only one in the world now. That's so cool. Look at this, guys. Awesome view. So if you come here, make sure you go to this lower level here where you can get this view. Totally different view of the bridge. Look at this herd of sheep on the cliff. Alright, it's been an awesome day so far. It's about 2 o'clock already and we still have the main destination on the list. We are on our way to Palcoyo right now and it's about 2 o'clock. We should arrive there around 4 o'clock just in time for an awesome sunset. We've been looking forward to this one for a long time. This has been on the top of our list in Peru. Hopefully it doesn't disappoint. One of our favorite parts of the day so far has been just driving around into these little villages. They don't have any technology, no heat. It's just these little huts that they live in and all day they're tending to their cattle, their alpaca. It's just a very simple, peaceful life. As you can see, we have broken up the videos into two different videos because so much happened that day. And so you'll see the next one in two days when we usually release it. So now it's time for Q&A. All right, the first one comes from Neil Lee Papa Wheelie. Hi guys, I was wondering, have you ever taken Mr. Potato Head to his future home for a meet and greet? No, we haven't. We haven't been able to because of quarantine. So the new owners, they are living in the Sacred Valley and they've been far away from people, keeping their distance, doing what's safe, so it just wouldn't make sense for them to have visitors come in there. So we are going to take Mr. Potato Head to his new home next week and help him get adjusted. We'll be wearing masks and just checking out the property, getting to know the people that are taking him. We've already had a FaceTime call with them and they are awesome people. You guys will see them in the video where we bring Potato Head to his new home. We're definitely not looking forward to it because it's obviously really sad. We've grown attached to him and we love him very much. So that'll be a sad day, but also a good day because he is going to some awesome people and that was our intention all along when we first took him in was to find him ultimately a forever home with someone who could give him the best life. Yeah, so we never thought that we would have Potato Head this long and get so attached to him and have him get so attached to us. Uh, but that's just how it worked mm -hmm. with the lockdown situation. It, might, it went much longer than we thought it would, but we were always trying to find him a good home. That was the priority. It wasn't ever to keep him. And it's just impossible to keep him. But 
The home that he's going to, it's pretty much the perfect place for a dog. <laughs> He'll be happier there than he would with us traveling around the world. Um, there are a few girl dogs, and he <laughs> really likes girl dogs, and they really like boys <laughs> from what <laughs> we've heard. So he'll get a lot of attention from them, uh, a lot of space to roam. Mm -hmm. They go on hikes and walks through the Sacred Valley all the time. And yeah, he'll be just, in good hands. Yeah, he'll be very happy there and safe. Next question is from Dian Sean E. Do you know when Machu Picchu will reopen and flights and borders will reopen? Are shops starting to open in Cusco? So I actually, this morning, I, I read something on Facebook about July 24th being a potential date for Machu Picchu. I know they're having some sort of meeting on July 15th. So we still don't have any for sure answers, but we're planning to stay in Peru for at least another month, maybe two. So hopefully it'll open in the time that we're here. <laughs> That would really suck if we were in Peru for five or six months and didn't even see Machu Picchu. So we're going to do our best to stay here until it opens. <laughs> yeah, and as far as shops opening up in Cusco, I would say maybe 50% of the shops are open, maybe a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Things are really starting to open up, which is nice. A lot of cafes, restaurants, everything, electronic stores. You name it. And as far as flights and borders opening, we have no idea about that. Uh, I would say it's gonna be at least another month, maybe more. It's all rumors. We've heard pretty much every single month for the next six months that different mm -hmm. months uh, flights will resume, but then it doesn't happen, so. And anything can change, so we're not really getting our hopes set on anything. So our plan is to travel Peru for the next month or two. We are trying to rent a car. We have one option that seems pretty good. So if you guys have any people that want to rent us a car, uh, let us know. We're still on the search. Many people get this wrong. We're not looking for a tour guide to take us in a car. Like We can find that very easily. We've had a lot of offers. We want to rent a car ourselves or find someone who will loan us a car just us and we want to travel around peru in a car all around peru road for, trip of for peru. a month so please if you reach out it's not for a tour guide <laughs> we've had many people reach out about that we just want to go ourselves and if you can find anything for us or if you know in cusco or around cusco where we can do that that would be very helpful uh also we're going to be leaving cusco in a few days so that's kind of crazy. Yeah, most likely we'll be back, <laughs> like very soon on this trip. We just probably have to go back through Cusco, but yeah. we'll see. So it might not be completely goodbye. <laughs> All right, we have another question that comes from Selena on Instagram, and she's also one of our patrons. Thank you, Selena. Her question is, how is the Spanish class? Is Potato Head speaking two languages now? <laughs> I have noticed that he has been learning more English and learning his name a lot better lately. So I, I've tried to speak a little Spanish to him. He doesn't really respond to it. So either I'm saying it way wrong or like I'll be like, Ben Aki, like come here. And yeah, nothing. <laughs> he doesn't really seem to respond to that. Uh, but he does respond to stay and sit and come here and potato. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think he might know more English. I think <laughs> for the last few years when he was in Cusco, he would hang around tourists. He seems to follow tourists. Even when he's walking with us, walking around, uh, if he sees some tourists come by, he likes to go and say hi to them and kind of walk with them. And if anyone um, has food, he will be your best friend. He can smell the food and he'll just follow you and sniff the bed. <laughs> yeah, he's a really smart dog. He would hang out in Plaza de Armas where all the tourists were hanging out in the middle there, hang out next to McDonald's where, of course, a <laughs> lot of tourists would hang out and give him food. He was very smart, always around the tourists, begging for food. <laughs> and so... He probably learned some English from them over the years. <laughs> a lot of you guys have been wondering about our Spanish skills and what we've been learning. So we've been really busy making these videos, so we haven't really carved out a lot of time to actually sit down and take lessons or learn Spanish. But we're learning as we are going out and about, talking to locals, picking up phrases here and there. So. It's coming slowly but surely. Yeah, we're doing the natural way, the <laughs> organic way as we go out. 
So we'll be traveling around Peru for quite a while longer and we'll be sure to learn some more as we go. Uh, all right, well, I think that concludes Q&A. If you guys have a question that you want answered, just leave it in the comments below, write Q&A and then the question. And please like this video, it does help us out a lot. And please comment as well. YouTube likes when there's engagement. <laughs> and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and real quick, just a huge thank you to all of our subscribers. You guys are great about giving us tips, advice, information, support, yeah. encouragement, and yeah. it means so much to us. Um, it's really helped us get through the lockdown. We yeah. felt like we had people there with us, friends, and that's helped a lot. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, you guys are awesome, and we will see you in the next video. Hey guys, we can only do so much on YouTube and we only put out a video every two or three days. So if you want more, if you want daily stuff, you should head to Instagram, find us at Alexander Travel Bum. And that's where you'll find daily stories and photos about our travels. Hey, thanks for making it all the way through this video. If you want to watch more, click one of these videos. Subscribe because I'm traveling all around the world and I'm sharing the whole thing with you. Thanks.